शुभ प्रभात लेट स्टार्ट टू टू लेट स्टार्ट और आई मस्ट से लेट्स रिज्यूम आवर जर्नी इन द लाइफ ऑफ श्री राम कृष्ण परमहंस देव वी केम टू नो दैट द फर्स्ट मीटिंग बिटवीन द डिवाइन एंड द डिविटी हैज ओकर्ड ऑलरेडी एंड लेट्स सी वट हैपन नेक्स्ट टू आवर गधाधर नाउ हो became slowly and slowly as per the divine's own wish shri ramakrishna paramhans still the journey is there still it is there to so that we can add the the title of paramhans but before that let's see what happened next god intoxicated state the period subsequent to shri ramakrishna's first realization of the divine mother was quite naturally replete with thrilling in incidents of a spiritual nature he was just stepping into a new realm vast and limitless every day he had extraordinary visions some of them while in the trance state others in normal consciousness though he lived and moved in this world he belonged in reality to another region and held communion with strange invisible beings he was often seen conversing with the stone image of kali as if it were fully conscious to the people of the kali temple all this looked like madness pure and simple his nephew concluded that the great nervous strain of his sadhanas had caused some derangement in the brain and the physician to the rajas of bhukoilash was consulted shri ramakrishna remained under his treatment for some time but with no benefit the physical shock of the first vision of the mother was so great that for a time he lost control over his body when he was calmer and attempted to conduct the worship of the goddess it would always take unexpected turns strange visions and thoughts flashed before him before beginning to meditate he would say to himself i shall sit silent and unmoved like that image of vairava shri ramakrishna afterwards described what would happen i would distinctly hear strange rattling sounds in my joints from the ankle upwards as if one were locking them up one by one so that the body might remain fixed i remained perforce in that position till the end of the meditation when the same rattling sounds would again be heard as the joints were unlocked in the reverse orders not until this was done could i move or stand up sometimes i saw specks of light like a swarm of fireflies before my eyes at other times a veil of luminous mist would envelop me again i would see with closed as well as open eyes luminous waves like molten silver pervading pervading everything not knowing what this meant or whether they were helpful or detrimental to my spiritual progress i would lay open my heart to mother saying mother i don't know what these things are i am ignorant of mantras and all other things requisite to realization of the teach me mother how to realize thee who else can help me art thou not my only refuge and guide this was my earnest prayer night and day i used to weep bitterly in the extremity of my grief though the young priest was blessed with the vision of his divine mother the goal of his endeavors yet it did not give him unmixed joy for it was not continuous he could get a glimpse of her only in meditation or through some effort to him this could only mean one thing that his realizations were not true else they would surely they would surely be without effort and uninterrupted could it be that his thirst for god intense as it was was half-hearted 
thoughts such as these made him redouble his efforts and increase his prayers to the divine mother from this time onward his attitude towards the mother changed he became like a little child confined sorry he became like a little child confident that his inability to see her whenever he wished was because she in a playful mood was purposely hiding herself he felt that ere long she would take him in her arms that he would no longer be permitted to stray in the labyrinths of the world he was learning to resign himself to her to her will to check the impulses of his own ego and to let her will to let her will direct him his self surrender was complete o oh mother he would pray day and night i have taken refuge in thee teach me what to do or say thy will in paramount everywhere as is for the benefit of thy children merge my ego in thy will and make me thy instrument his actions were much criticized but what was that to him was not the mother leading him by the hand this material world was fast loss losing its reality for him and the presence of the divine mother was the only thing he cared for as his as his realization deepened the vision of the mother became continuous formerly at the time of meditation it was with difficulty that he gained a glimpse of her beautiful hand feet or face now he saw her entire form as she spoke to him and directed him in his day's work therefore while offering food to her a luminous ray from her eyes would touch it merely taking its essence now he saw her partake of the food even before it was offered in the regular way formerly he regarded the stone image of kali as possessed of consciousness now the image disappeared and in its stead there stood the living mother herself smiling and blessing him i actually felt her breath on my hand the master used to say later on at night when the room was lighted I never saw her divine form cast any shadow on the wall even though I looked closely from my own room I could hear her going to the upper story of the temple with the delight of a girl her anklets jingling to see if I were not mistaken I would follow and find her standing with flowing hair on the balcony of the first floor looking either at calcutta or out over the ganges so my dear friend today we are stopping here the next part of this chapter we will read again on the next week until then let be blessed with whatever form we are attached with of the almighty and let's say that almighty must prevail in our heart and the prayer which we today learn from this chapter is let's pray that our ego our existence must, must be amalgamed with thy will let's make this prayer so that we became the instrument of his will so that our life our sorrow our joy our happiness will all be almighty's so with this prayer i must say शुभमस्तु